you want to discover some things about God, then look at nature. It's amazing how creation can teach us about the creativity of our Heavenly Father. And if you really want to understand what God thinks about uniqueness, just look at bugs. Did you know that there are 900,000 different species of bugs? In other words, of all the species there are that exist in the world, 80% of the species that exist are bugs. There are 10 quintillion insects living right now at this very moment. And here's some scary news. There are 200 million bugs for every person. When you think in terms of biomass, this is very interesting. There are 300 pounds of insects for every pound of human flesh. We're outnumbered. But the point is that God is a God of variety. God is a God of uniqueness. And if you want to understand more about God, just look around at the vast array of how he's created so many different things. Another thing that you can do if you want to learn something about God is look at the people around you. I mean, look at the variety that's there. I actually think the more you look and learn about the strengths of other people, the uniqueness of other people, the more you're not only going to understand about God, but the more you're going to understand about yourself. That's why we're going to define uniqueness this month this way. Learning more about others so you can know more about yourself. We want to take a little bit of the focus off of ourselves and look at the people around us for just a minute because in looking at their strengths and looking at how God has made them and appreciating what God has done in their life, we can learn not only about ourselves but how God sees us. When we learn to see other people the way God sees them, we'll learn to see ourselves in a different way. So what if as a leader and as a parent, your goal this month is to actually teach your children about characters in scripture and in seeing what they're like and seeing their uniqueness hopefully it will help them see themselves in a different way. For example, one of the first characters we want to talk about is a lady named Deborah. Deborah was definitely a woman before her time. As a matter of fact, if you study scripture, you'll find out that she had amazing ability. So much that even one of the key military leaders in charge of the army said to Deborah, I'll go to battle and I'll fight if you will go with me. But if you're not going to go with me, I'm not going to go. She was a prophetess. She was a judge. As a matter of fact, you don't find any women in scripture that accomplished what Deborah accomplished. She's an illustration of God uniquely putting a woman in a point in time to do something amazing. So in the story of Deborah, we learn that it's okay to be different, and we move on to the story of Gideon. Gideon's also an illustration to us of what it means to be unique, and the fact that God can take somebody who is insignificant or seemingly insignificant and do some very significant things with them. Because in the story of Gideon, he happened to be a part of the tribe of Israel that was the least of all the tribes. And in the tribe he lived in, his family was the least of all the families. And in his family, he was considered to be kind of the runt of the litter. So the powerful part of the story of Gideon is God takes somebody who's really not anybody at all and does something amazing with his life. That should give all of us hope. Chances are there's a kid sitting in your room who feels like they're not important. Well, you'll have an opportunity as a parent or as a leader to lean into a son or daughter or a child and say, listen, if God can use Gideon to do this, then God can use you. And then we're going to move to the story of John the Baptist. Now, here's an interesting character. As a matter of fact, if you're talking about bugs, the Bible even says John lived off a diet of locusts. He was a strange, strange guy. But God used John the Baptist to set up the Messiahship of Jesus, to let an entire generation know that Jesus was the Messiah and the coming Christ. God used John the Baptist to tell the story. God can use anybody. He wants to, to share his message. The reason it's so important for us to talk about this idea of uniqueness and to look at these different characters is because it's a way to remind each one of us that God has something unique that he wants us to do, as a part of the story that we play. In other words, when you look at scripture, and one of the last stories we'll talk about this month is a passage in 1 Corinthians where actually Paul is speaking to the church. And he's reminding the church that everyone in the church has been given a unique gift. And they're all wired and created in a, in a variety of different ways, so they can make their contribution not only to the church, but to God's message and God's story to those outside the church. Because when we learn to appreciate how God uses others in our life, I think it kind of gives us hope as individuals that God actually wants to use us, the God who created the universe, the God who created the world, the God who created 10 quintillion bugs, created you and created me because he wants to do something specifically with our lives. 
It's very, very important that every child in every church and in every home recognizes that they're all different. They all have a unique part to play and that God created them to say something unique. That's why we hope this month your children will remember this passage of scripture. It's found in 1 Corinthians 12, 4, and it says, there are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given by the same spirit. In other words, we all have the same God. As different as we are, we all have the same God. We're all connected and linked together by the same creator. The same creator who creates with variety, who creates with uniqueness, so we can be a part of a plan that he has for us. The reason this is important to you as a leader or as a parent is because your homes and your churches are full of kids who are all very, very different. And they're looking for their significant place. They're looking for how they fit in. I have four children, one son, three daughters. And years and years ago, I was reading a passage of scripture in Proverbs that says, train up a child in the way that he should go and he'll not depart. And I, I had been led by a lot of leaders to believe that meant I was supposed to get every child to fit into this Christian cookie cutter mold of what they were supposed to be until finally one leader leaned in one day and said, no, 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 that passage means train each one of your children according to their unique bent. So you can identify and understand how they're wired and help them find what God has called them to do. As leaders, this is your job, this is your role to help them understand by looking at those around them and how unique they are to find and discover their own uniqueness.